Immediately following Jesus' baptism, we see in the Gospel of Mark that Jesus is tempted by Satan. Satan understands the power given to the Son and wants to exploit it for his own reign of terror on earth. All Satan wants is for Jesus to use his God-given gifts for himself. All Satan wants is for Jesus to become selfish. In the end, Satan does not get his way. He is not craftier than Christ, and he is not able to get Jesus to forget the reason why the Father sent him into the world. Jesus sees through Satan's deception and comes out on the other side, now ready to do the work that the Father has given him to do. Immediately following the temptation, And wrapped up as nicely as a thesis statement for the gospel, Jesus proclaims, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Jesus is going to use the gift of the Holy Spirit in baptism for the kingdom of God. Jesus comes to this conclusion right away. He's going to use every part of who he is for the glory of God. In our baptisms, which we remembered at the beginning of worship this morning, we, like Jesus, had the Holy Spirit descend onto us, penetrating our beings and taking up residence inside. In our baptisms, we received one gift, the greatest gift ever, the beginning of God living inside, the force of creation itself growing us and guiding us, a real presence within us, a presence so deep and so lasting that there is now no place we can go that God isn't. And with this gift of the Holy Spirit in our baptisms, we too are shared throughout our lives many gifts that are to be used for the kingdom of God, for the glory of God on earth. Because of this amazing gift of the Holy Spirit, we throughout our lives continue to receive gifts that we otherwise would not have been shared. These gifts include things like wisdom, faith, variety of talents, but let's not forget about our families and careers and finances, those, those sorts of things too. For they are all gifts from God and therefore are intended to be used for the glory of God and for the kingdom come. You see, biblically speaking, these gifts aren't ours to keep for ourselves. We are filters through which God shares these gifts with all. God trusts us to be faithful and wise, to share with others as God has shared with us. As baptized people, we believe that these gifts are shared through the Holy Spirit for a purpose. They are to be used for the same reason that Jesus had, to proclaim to the world that the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Our gifts are given to us in order that we may be able to live in the kingdom of God and share with others the glory of this experience. The problem with this is that naturally we try and hoard our gifts. Try and keep them for ourselves. Too often we live our lives outside of the kingdom of God, living in a world where we believe in scarcity over and against God's abundance. Too often we listen to that little demonic voice that tells us to keep what we have for a rainy day, that we never know what the future will bring. But that voice is a liar. It is Satan himself bringing you temptation to be selfish, just like we saw he did with Jesus. 
that voice is a liar. The Bible is very clear that we do know what the future is bringing. It is bringing the kingdom of God on earth, and the rains have stopped. The bow in the sky to remind us that the future is bright. That voice is a liar. It is Satan trying to keep you from living in the reality that Christ has brought to us on earth. The reign of God as it unfolds into every corner. Satan wants us to become selfish. He wants us to be turned in on ourselves, telling us that we are first. And only after I take care of me, then should I offer what is left over to share. The kingdom of God works different than that. The kingdom of God is the place where we live in God's abundance, discerning the gifts that we have in ourselves and in others, and helping each other to live in the peace and the harmony that we believe Jesus Christ actually brought through his life, death, and resurrection. Satan wants us to be selfish, but God has started a new way of life for us in Christ. To keep what God has shared with us to ourselves is sin. Luther pointed this out, saying that sin itself is a curving in on the self. Original sin is that we are worried about the I and not about the other. However, in Christ, we are able to start to live another way of life. In Christ, we die to sin. The old self is drowned and comes to live in the beginning of the resurrection. The new self, imitating our Savior Jesus Christ, who sets the self aside for the greater good. The new life in Christ that we are brought into in baptism allows us to live the altruistic, self-sacrificing life that is worthwhile. It mimics, or at least tries to, the life of Jesus Christ. Now you might say that living a Christ-like life is impossible. Who is going to actually trust that we can die for the kingdom of God and then just resurrect? Who's going to believe that the world really is becoming the kingdom of God on earth? What fool would believe that? Can't they see the storm clouds on the horizon? Don't they see the graves where those so-called heroes now lie? Who is going to believe that? Well, my hope is that we are. Because that is what it means to be a Christian. It means dying to sin, living a new way of life, and sharing with the world the gifts that God has trusted us with. Like Jesus, we are tempted to use our gifts for ourselves. We see and experience things that we fear, and they often have an effect on us. We try and hoard our acorns like the squirrels in the fall. But also like Jesus, we don't have to let what this world shows us define our lives. Instead, we can let the promises of God define our lives. Instead of worrying, we can set our cares on God and have faith that God loves us and will never leave us alone. Instead of giving into the temptations of the little red devil standing on our shoulders, we can trust that the God who created everything has filled our hearts and set them up as home. And that what is inside of us gets to define us and how we act. All Satan wants is for us to turn our backs on our Creator, to think about ourselves and to use the gifts of the kingdom of God for his evil kingdom that he dreams of. 
Like Jesus following our baptisms, we are tempted by Satan. He tries desperately to convince us to become selfish, to let the fear of his kingdom rule our lives. For Satan knows that you are powerful, that you have been shared gifts that are able to change the world, and he wants you to use them to change it for the worse. He wants us all to become selfish, turned in on ourselves, taking care of others with the scraps that we have left at the end of our feasts. And oh, is he willing to give us those feasts and fat bank accounts and the luxury that we desire if we just turn to him in our fears. Every single day we are tempted by Satan. We are tempted to use the gifts of God for ourselves and only then share what we feel is excess. Satan is cunning. He knows our weaknesses. They are tailored special for us. But the good news for us is that too, like Jesus and his temptation, we have the Holy Spirit to sustain us to guide us through our desert situations, and to keep us strong when the tempter really works hard. In our baptism, we are given this one great gift of the Holy Spirit in us. We actually are now able to live Christ-like lives because we actually now have Christ as a part of us, dwelling inside fighting for us, reminding us that what Jesus said was actually true. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. In his temptation with Satan, Jesus comes to his conclusion right away. He is going to be who God created him to be. But Satan's tempting question is still looming over us. Are we going to use every part of who we are for the glory of God and for the kingdom come? Are we going to be the people that God created us to be? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen.